I need a ladder. This will do. Okay. So, I want you to picture a ladder, okay? Uh, I'll repeat all the relevant details for this later on, so don't worry about writing it right now. But suppose the ladder is 10 meters long, okay? Use your imagination. 10 meter ladder, and it's resting against the wall, and it's on the ground. I'm just raising it so you can actually see it, okay? The ladder is resting on a wall, it's 10 meters long, and then, as the name suggests, it starts to slip, okay? So, I don't know, it loses grip and off it goes, okay? Now the question is, if you know that this end of the ladder on the ground is moving at a certain speed, let's say four meters per second, and again, I'll repeat all the numbers for you. If I know it's moving at four meters per second this way on the ground, so this is what I'm measuring down here, okay? How fast is the top of the ladder moving? Let me say that one more time, okay? If I know that the bottom of the ladder down here is moving at a certain speed, can I work out how fast the top of the ladder is moving? Okay. Now, um, I said before, this is a lovely question because it's very simple to state. You can all picture it right now. You've got it all in your head. I'll give you the numbers so you can actually write the thing down. But it's quite counterintuitive because at least my intuition says, well, if this is moving at a certain speed, like say, four meters per second, then it stands to reason, it's not good reasoning, it's actually false as you're about to work out. It stands to reason that the top is also moving at the same speed, right? I mean, they're, just, they're attached to the same thing. Shouldn't they be moving at the same speed? If we work through this, we're going to find out that, in fact, they're, they're not, okay? And we're going to work out exactly how much, okay? So now I'm going to ask you to pick up your pen again, and let's work out what the important things are here. The ladder is 10 meters long. So let me say that. Oh, wrong color. The ladder is 10 meters long. The bottom of the ladder, the part that's sliding on the ground, is sliding at, I think the, time, the speed I said was 4 meters per second. Okay? So the bottom is moving at 4 meters per second. Okay? So now the question is, how fast is the top moving? And I'm going to give you a particular value for for where it is, which as you'll see in a minute is going to become important. When the bottom is six meters from, I said it was resting on a wall, yeah? So when it's slid so that it's now six meters away from the wall, here's my ladder, okay? If it was resting like this, which is a bit unstable, it would be zero meters from the wall. Can you see the bottom here is on the wall? Okay, but it starts to slide, it starts to slide. At a certain moment, this distance here along the ground will be six meters. Okay, at that particular instant, how fast is the top moving? Okay, now I've intentionally not given you any kinds of proteomerals or anything like that. I haven't drawn a diagram, even though I've waved this around enthusiastically, so hopefully you can understand the picture in your head. I want you to see if you can step through this on your own. Can you identify what's constant, what, what varies? Where are the rates of change in this? I haven't stated any derivatives or anything like that. You have to work that out yourself. What equations bind everything together? You're going to have to use, come up with some measurement equations. Uh, and then can you do the actual calculus legwork to answer this question? How fast is the top of the ladder moving at this particular instant in time? Okay, so there is the scenario. I'm going to encourage you to draw a diagram, even if it's a very simple one. Have a shot. If you think you've got an idea, um, call Mrs. Lee's or I over and we'll, we'll nudge you in the right direction or give you a clue if you're completely confused. Okay, off you go. I'm really encouraged because um, whenever I sit you at, I was, um, I, was at a, I was speaking at an education conference last week and um, there was this researcher there and he was talking about how we as learners should think about mistakes because mistakes or, or trouble in a question um, can sometimes be really discouraging. Like you, you know that feeling where you get something wrong and you're like, that's not a good feeling. I don't like that feeling. Um, one of the things he said, which is really, really clever and it stuck with me and I was like, hmm, I want to pass this on to my year 12s, uh, was that mistakes are a sign that the work I'm giving you is hard enough to make you learn. Let me say that again slowly. Mistakes, or struggle, just as equally, are a sign that the work I'm giving you is hard enough to make you learn. Because if you know what it's like, if, you, if all I gave you was a list of 100 questions and you just had to add one digit numbers, you could do them and make no mistakes, I'd really hope, and, and feel really good, like I'm so good at this. And you would learn exactly nothing, 
right? So I'm really encouraged because I'm, I'm seeing you guys press into this question. Everyone's approach it a slightly different way, which I love. I'm particularly going to pick up, after I'm done with this, I'm going to pick up Michael's way of solving this because it's completely, well, it's significantly different to mine. I really like it and I want to show you more than one solution to this. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. When I gave you this question, I deliberately gave it to you without any kinds of pronouns or anything like that. So you had to pick for yourself. And that was part of the challenge of the question. What I want to do for all of us is underneath where you've made your solution, would you work with my solution just so you don't get confused with what variables or what, what letters and all that kind of thing. And you can compare with whether you like yours better or mine, but at least this way you'll be, we'll all be on the same page you won't get too confused, okay? I'm going to show you mine and then I will quickly tease Michael's for you. So, the first step that I suggested in our overall strategy was to identify constants and variables. And this is the first hurdle, okay? So you've got your ladder here, right? And this ladder is 10 meters in length. Is that a constant or a variable? This is a constant. I, at least I haven't said it's one of those weird telescoping ladders that gets longer and shorter. It's just 10 meters, okay? It's always 10 meters. But then when you have a look at the other things you're going to introduce into this, these other things, like say how high the ladder is off the ground, or how far away the ladder is on the, sorry, yes, on the wall, and high, how far away it is on the ground, these things here, they actually change. So don't write this down. But I saw a lot of you write six here. Now, there's nothing wrong with saying six. It comes from something that is said in the question, okay? But I'm going to encourage you not to just say six, because the second you do that, you are describing this thing down here, how far the ladder is away from the wall. You're describing it as a, look, is it a constant or a variable? You're saying it's a constant. It's six, but it's not. It's a variable. Does that make sense? So you need to give it a pronumeral. You can call it anything you like. I saw lots of different things. You might have called it A and B because, you know, Pythagoras, which is going to come in a second. Um, you might have called it X and Y. Pro tip for you, if you call things X and Y, make the X the horizontal one and the Y the vertical one, just so your brain doesn't fizzle out over confusing which is which. I think X is fine. I'm going to call it X meters here. Okay. So there's a variable. There's one more variable that's important to me. Where is it? You all have it. You all gave it a different name. Where is it on the diagram? Can you put your hand to show me where does it, where does it look? It's that, yeah, there you go. I can see that, that vertical length over here. And it's also variable, right? You can call it anything you like. A lot of you call it Y, which I'm totally okay with. I just, you know, I was solving this, and I just called it H for height. But call it whatever you like, okay? All right. I've identified my constants and my variables. At least when it comes to the lengths on here, there's actually one more constant that I need, which is actually stated in the question. Can you tell me what the constant is? Four meters per second. And as I even sort of clued you into over here, it's a rate, right? So which rate is it? Have a look. What's the derivative that goes with it? How'd you state it in my question? Yeah, it's dx on dt, right? dx on dt. One of the ways you can know you're on the right track is that you've got the dx corresponds to this meters, right? And the dt corresponds to the seconds. The units should line up with your derivative. So that's dx on dt. You happy with that?